Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This is a sharp looking bunch here, I must say. Very nice. I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you for coming. We're glad to be here. Are you, uh, are you experiencing blessings this year? Yes. I hope that you are. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that's the case. I want to read a passage to you here from the book of Luke, chapter 1. Uh, and, and the setup for this is that uh, there's an angel, and his name is Gabriel, and Gabriel visits Mary, and uh, there's a number of details, but you could put it this way. She doesn't know what's going on. What is this? What's happening? So Luke chapter 1, verses 31 and 35, the angel explains all of this. She says to Mary, uh, the, the angel says to Mary, you will conceive and give birth to a son. You will name him... Jesus, he will be very great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. This is an angel telling her this. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. That's a good question. The angel replied, here's how it's going to happen. How's this going to happen? The angel replied, this is from the Bible text, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Do you believe in miracles? Yes. Yeah? That was a tentative yes. Yes? Maybe? Not sure? Commit wondering? Let me be a little more specific about what I mean. Because people use this word and sometimes we kind of use it in different ways. There are a number of things in this world that we could look at uh, with wonder and awe. Maybe even tremendous emotion. And we say, wow, that's miraculous. And we're right. It is miraculous. For example, when a child is born. I've often heard people say, look at this, it's, a, it's the miracle of life. You've heard that before, right? Yes, and are they right? Yes, they are. Yes, it is, that is. But for this evening, for our time tonight, when I ask if you believe in miracles, I mean miracles, I'm gonna use the word in a little more strict and a little more narrow sense than that. I'm talking about miracles as something that we don't normally see in the natural world, in the material world. I'm talking about miracles tonight when I say, do you believe in miracles? I'm asking about miracles in the sense of some type of occurrence that happens that is not operating within the regular physical laws of our universe. Like something out of, out of the ordinary, beyond what happens in the material world has happened. So, when a baby is born, that's wonder, wonderful and miraculous, yes? Yeah. yeah, yes it is, of course. But that happens all the time, every day. As miraculous as it is, it happens within the physical laws of our world. So when I'm asking about a miracle tonight, I'm saying like a biblical miracle, like just as an example, water which exists with a certain type of chemical formula, suddenly and instantly changing into wine, which is physically something, it's still a liquid, but it's a difficult, it's a different, completely different chemical formula. Water instantly changing into wine, that's not something that happens in kind of the normal, regular, physical laws of our universe. So let me ask it now again. Do you believe that miracles could happen? Yes. 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 I do too. I'm asking because it's Christmas Eve. You knew that, right? Did you know it was Christmas yeah. Eve? No. I didn't know. A couple of folks looked shocked. What? I gotta get to CVS quick. <laughs> if you gotta get to CVS now, you're like me. It's too late. Get the wallet out. Find a couple cards somewhere and stuff some money in the cards, and here we go. Uh, it's Christmas Eve, and uh, what we're recognizing, what we're celebrating here this evening, if, you're, if we're really celebrating the, two, the true meaning of it, actually requires miracles. It requires the miraculous. Like, you have to believe in miracles for Christmas. And I'm not talking about Santa. I'm talking about Jesus and the story of Jesus. 
And I mean the kind of miracle that involves an occurrence that does not operate within the normal, natural, physical laws of our world. C.S. Lewis said that Christianity is the only religion, he was an incredibly well-read person, way beyond the norm in terms of his, his knowledge. He said that Christianity is the only religion that he knew of that actually had to have miracles in order to be true. He said Christianity could not be stripped of the miraculous and still be true. Here, I'm going to quote him. He says, the Christian story is precisely the story of one grand miracle. The Christian assertion being that what is beyond all space and time, what is uncreated, eternal, came into nature, came into human nature, descended into his own universe, and rose again, bringing nature up with him. It is one great miracle. Miracle, and he says, if you take that away, there's really nothing specifically Christian left. It's an interesting thing. It's, it's one of those thoughts that requires a little thought, uh, pondering. But again, we're here tonight, and uh, it's 9 p.m. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> we have some folks in our church. We have a lady in our church who said to me this morning, she said, uh, 9 p.m. is past my bedtime, Dad. I said, it's past mine, too. But I'm going to be there. And here we are. We're in church. It's, it's, about, did I say I'm glad that you're here? Yes. I'm glad that you're here at 9 o'clock. That's awfully nice of you. And here we are. And an extraordinary miracle has to be true in order for this gathering to really make any sense. Can miracles happen? You know, when I've heard people who talk, who say there are, or, or read the thoughts of people who don't believe in miracles, there's obviously many people in our world who say, that, come on, that, does, that can't happen. When I read what they say, what I, what I begin to recognize is that what they're talking about doesn't even really have to do with miracles in the most basic sense. They may say, I don't believe in miracles. Get out of here with that stuff. I don't believe that, but really, what they're really saying has more to do with God. People who don't believe that miracles are possible, they don't believe that there's a God. Frankly, if there is no God, their position makes perfect sense. They're right. I agree with them. If there's no God, without God, the physical material world is all that exists. There's nothing or no one to, to bring about something supernatural. Supernatural means above or beyond the natural. If there's no God, it makes sense that there would be no miracles. Or there, there's this view too. Either they don't believe in God, or they believe that there's a God, but they, their, their view of God is very small and limited. And this is strange because, well, then what, who, how could he be God if he's small and limited? Like, is this the God who created everything? Did he speak the universe into existence? Like, did God do that? If he did, the Bible says he spoke in, in creation. If he could do that, then could he do a miracle? <laughs> yeah. So again, if you say, I don't believe in miracles, it's not the miracles that you, you got a real small, no God or a real small God, or there's one other possibility. They believe that there's a God and that he's powerful, but that he's removed from us, his creation. Like there's a big God somewhere out there that exists, but he really doesn't care about us and our little problems and this stuff that we got going on and our little daily shenanigans, he doesn't care about that. So again, when people say, I don't believe in this miracle stuff, it's, it's really rooted in their view of God. They think there's no God or a small limited God or he's a distant aloof God who doesn't care. Tonight, here we are, Christmas Eve, because we're here because God does exist. And you know what? He is strong enough. He's able. And you know what? He does care about us. He cares about you. You say, I don't even know if I believe in God. He cares about you. He really does. That's true. I testify to you based on the truth of the Bible that miracles are possible. The supernatural is possible because of God and who he is. 
And so here we are, Christmas happened, Jesus came into this world. Like this virgin says, how could this be possible? Well, the Holy Spirit's gonna do a work. I believe that happened. Do you believe that happened? Yes. I believe that, I really do. Aren't you glad that happened? Yes. yes. That's good news. A couple thousand years ago, there was this moment in time where the laws of the physical world that we live in were overruled. They were superseded by a God who did something that's way beyond anything natural. This God who, this God, think about it, who transcends time and space, actually stepped into the world that he created and he took on human flesh and he became a human being. That qualifies as a miracle. That's a miracle right there. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, we have these words. Speaking of Jesus, it says, he gave up his divine privileges. It's an incredible statement. He took the humble position of a slave and was born a human being. This is not normal. In the regular workings of our material world, this defies all logical... Things like this can't happen. Except it did. Can you accept that this could happen? We recognize and we celebrate here tonight one of the most extraordinary of all miracles that's ever occurred. Lots of miracles have occurred, but this is like one of the granddaddies. And this miracle, the fact that Jesus would come here, that God would step down from heaven and come here, it means some things. It has meaning. Like it means, if he would do that, it means that he cares for you. It means, if God would do this and he cares about us, it means that the things that you do and the life that you live matters. You say, I feel like my life doesn't matter. It matters. The fact that Jesus would do this means that you have worth and value. Boy, we need to know that in our world today. You have worth and value. Every human life has worth and value. It means, the fact that Jesus would do this means that the one, this God whose existence gives everything else meaning, loves you. Have you ever thought about the fact that God loves you personally? Like he doesn't just love people, he knows your name and he loves you personally. He knows you. He knows everything about you. He knows things about you that you forgot. And he still loves you anyhow. Isn't that nice? I, I remember hearing a, a preacher many, many years ago, he said, every human being longs for this. I think this is true. We long to have someone who actually knows everything about us, everything, all of the, everything, and still loves us anyhow. I think that's true. Think about it later. We want somebody who actually knows everything about us but still loves us anyhow. You know who does? Jesus. Jesus, we recognize you, we honor you, we're grateful for the miracle of your birth, Jesus. So there was a point in time where it's like a little baby comes and he's born and he's lying in a manger in this little feeding trough. But this little baby in the feeding trough is actually, in a certain sense, bigger than the whole universe. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. So, um, this morning I read a poem that I had written, and, um, and several people said to me, hey, do the poem again. You should read your poem. We really like the poem. A lot of people were deeply touched. A couple people got saved just from hearing me read this poem. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. So, uh, well, Wendy and Ron said, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. Now, you wanna hear the poem? Should I read the poem? And then after I read the poem, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna take candles, and, we're gonna, and the worship team will start. We're gonna light candles. And we're going to pass that light along so that everybody has a candle and uh, we're going to sing Silent Night. It's a great, beautiful way to end a service. When you get your candle, 
Can I ask you, please, be very, very, very <laughs> careful. Please be very, yes? Yes. We're going to be very careful. You're going to watch behind you. All our, yes? Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Here's the poem. Remember the old, uh, that old poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas? It's modeled after that. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the service, the people were joyful, but the pastor was nervous. <laughs> Songs of great worship were sung, they were grooving, and the pastor's fine message was stirring and moving. He often wore vests to help hide his belly, <laughs> But it still shook when he preached like a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> Nadia put that line in there. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even write that. She said, you should read this. As the service concluded, but before the goodbye, he could see everyone had a tear in their eye. But the man of the cloth hoped the people could reason that the main point was Jesus, the real hope of the season. Then he noticed the folks were alert. They weren't bored. Their praise and their thanks were to Jesus the Lord. So the folks who were gathered saw him smile with delight as he waved and he said, and to all, a good night. Stand if you would please. sound wonderful now please do me a favor and extinguish carefully that flame beautiful beautiful I love you so much hey bow your heads and let's pray Lord Jesus thank you for your wonderful goodness to us somebody was describing to me recently this goodness that you've extended toward him that he doesn't deserve. I said, that's grace. We all need it. We need his mercy and his grace and forgiveness. And we thank you, Lord, that that's what you did for us. I pray that every person in this room, every person who's watching online, Lord, would know the truth of your love and would know the truth of your presence. Let this be the Christmas that we all know who you are, that we all understand you love us and that will never ever change. You will never stop loving us. Let, let that truth be like just a vitality in our hearts. I think about in your word, perfect love casts out all fear. Let us live fearlessly because of who you are in us. Bless them all, each and every one, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless, Merry Christmas. Merry